Green Seal City. Is everybody ready to go? Let's proclaim the greatest radio show. Welcome to our Week 15 Fantasy episode. I'm your host, Jim Sella, here with Jay Dash and Big Easy. It's a special day on the spread. Everybody loves it. It's my birthday. Brr, brr, balling. Oh, Dash, before we get into anything, oh, Aaron Rodgers, what do I do about this bum? Who do you have as your backup? I don't have a backup quarterback. Who is the best quarterbacks out there? m m m m marcus Let's see, we got Carson Palmer, Tyrod Taylor, Sam Bradford, Alex Smith, Matt Barkley, Joe Flacco, Trevor Simeon, R. Jeezel, Blake (laughs) Bortles, Carson Wentz, Matt Moore, and Brossweiler. I'd take a look at Tyrod Taylor, possibly. He's going up... I was thinking the same. He's got well, obviously, man, going up against Cleveland. You've been saying it all year during these fantasy segments. Anyone going up Cle- against Cleveland, you like? And I feel bad for Eddie B. We were talking before the week. He, I, I made Andy Dalton one of my sleeper quarterbacks, and he had him. He said he, he was thinking about going with him over Drew Brees. And I said, if you lost with Andy Dalton at quarterback while you had Brees on the bench, it, you wouldn't like it very much. But he went the other way. He played Brees, sat Dalton. Breeze shit the bed, really, and he ended up losing by eight points, so I feel bad for Eddie B. And that, I, it was a mistake to play Breeze over Dalton, which you usually wouldn't think, but that's the way fantasy goes sometimes. I would never, I, I mean, I'd stand by that decision playing Breeze, obviously, but Tyrod Taylor against Cleveland seems like a pretty decent play. He He wasn't terrible against the Steelers. I mean, it, the offensive line didn't help him out at all. There was five sacks in that game, and Cleveland's not going to get to him like Pittsburgh did. What about Blake Bortles? Any faith in him? Uh, not really at this point, man. I do have Marquise Lee as one of the possible deep sleepers this week, and he's really turned into their best receiver out there. The way, I mean, him and Allen Robinson just aren't on the same page this season, and that's really what made him great last year was Allen Robinson. So... I'd I'd stay away from Blake Bortles. The only thing that scares me about Aaron Rodgers is it's supposed to be two degrees at kickoff at noon central time or, you know, whatever kickoff time is for them this week. I know it's a one o'clock game. I just don't know my time zones. That's going to be the coldest temperature at kickoff of any game in Chicago Bears history that's in Chicago. Yeah, so you never do know, though, cause, because I remember one year, it hadn't snowed all year. You wake up, and there was a ton of snow falling in New England. Everybody took all their New England players out of the lineup, and then Brady put up like 50 points that game. So you never really know what's going to happen. Should I play? Okay, listen, I got two flex positions, Tyler Boyd, Cole Beasley. Who should I play, Sterling Shepard or that Thielen from what? Minnesota? I was actually thinking about putting Thielen in as a sleeper this week. I ended up not doing it. I I took someone else over him. I actually had him written in, but I think Thielen can have a big week. I mean, he's been consistent recently. I think it's something like five weeks in a row now with double-digit fantasy points, and uh, I expect him to do the same this week. I was thinking... Thielen and Cole Beasley. I feel like Beasley's going to have a big game. He's consistent too, so that's not a bad play. All right, now we can get into the real fantasy talk because I'm sure nobody cares about my team. Believe it. Our situational starters average 14.65 points per non-quarterback. We have three players here. The first one, Tennessee wide receiver Rashard Matthews going into KC. They let up the second most fantasy points to wide receivers this season. He was shut down last week versus Denver. He only had one catch for 26 yards, but Denver, they're worse against the run, and they're very good against the pass. I think this should be easier this week, obviously. And if you look, Matthews had seven TDs over his previous eight games and at least 63 yards receiving in four straight games prior to last week. So he's been balling with Marcus Mariota out there. We have Tyrell Williams, San Diego wide receiver, going up against Oakland. They let up the 10th most fantasy points to wide receivers this season. Now, he only has nine targets over the last two weeks after having 25 targets combined in the previous two games. 
Now, he did have a little bit of a shoulder injury, but it really hasn't limited his playing time, and he still has four TDs in his last five games. And if you look, the last time they played Oakland in Oakland in week five, he had five catches for 117 yards and a touchdown. And the last guy is Easy's boy, Tyreek Hill, going up against Tennessee. Tennessee lets up the most fantasy points to wide receivers now, and he has double-digit fantasy points in five straight games in seven of his last eight games as well, and at least five targets in seven straight games and 40 targets over his last five games. He's also scored five times in his last three, three games. Now, some of that came in the receiving game. There was a rushing touchdown in there, and there was some kick return touchdowns in there as well. So if you get points in the kick return, this guy is a must play. But if not, I still play him this week. But who would you go with, Jim? I'm going to say Rashard Matthews. I like what they're doing in Tennessee. I like that offense. I think Marcus Mariota fits in really well with what they're trying to do. They run the ball really well there with DeMarco Murray so they can set up the play-action pass that opens things up for a receiver like Matthews. Plus, he's good with the ball in his hands, so he could take a quick slant 80 yards to the house. He doesn't have to you know, run downfield and catch it. So he's a threat as soon as he gets the ball in his hand. Easy. What do you think? Might as well just roll with Tyreek. Dude's a baller. That's your boy, yeah. He's a baller. He's lightning he up. He helped me win last week. Yeah, yeah. J- Jeremy Macklin came back. He really <laughs> didn't do much last week. Tyreek Hill's still the top target out there. You can consider Travis Kelsey as well. Um, Easy, get your shit straight, dog. It's on. It's <laughs> on. Uh... <laughs> but yeah, Tyreek Hill's one of the top options out there in Kansas City right now. Uh, let's move on to our sleepers here. They average 12.24 points per non quarterback. First up, we have Bilal Powell of the New York Jets going up against Miami. They they let up the 12th fewest points to fantasy running backs this season. But if you look, last week, Bilal Powell had 145 yards and two touchdowns at San Francisco. Matt Forte's injured right now. They said he had a torn meniscus, and he said it's been torn all season long, and he still hopes to play this week. But he can't be a full go, and Blau Powell's going to get some serious playing time. And if you look, the last time they went up against Miami in Week 9, it was in Miami. Blau Powell, in a backup role, still had eight fantasy points. So if he gets more playing time this week, I think he can get into double digits and have a solid week. We got Pierre Garçon. Versus Carolina, they let up the fourth most fantasy points to wide receivers. Now, he's been getting a a lot of looks recently. 28 targets over his last three home games. He has double-digit fantasy points in five of his last six games and at least five catches for 50 yards in all but four games this season. Now, Deshaun Jackson, I think you asked me about Deshaun Jackson yesterday, Jim, correct? Believe it. I think he can have a good game here. Like I said, Carolina's not very good against the pass. I think he can have a good game. Jordan Reed looks like a solid play if if he's a full go. Obviously, he didn't do much last week. But I like Jameson Crowder too. But Pierre Garçon has been pretty consistent this season. So I think he's a solid play. And the last one is... Pittsburgh tight end, Ladarius Green, going into Cincinnati. They let up the third most fantasy points to tight ends this season. He blew up two weeks ago, had over 100 yards and a touchdown. Last week, he didn't fare so well, just two catches for 25 yards. But Big Ben didn't play very well, had no touchdowns, three interceptions, and it was very cold out there. It just wasn't a a day for passing. So I think Ladarius Green can bounce back and have a good game this week. Who are you saying? I agree with you on Ladarius Green. I think he's going to be the number two option in the passing game in Pittsburgh's offense moving forward, especially in the playoffs. He's a big guy. He's a solid guy. He knows how to use his size to his advantage. And it seems like him and Ben Roethlisberger really built a rapport rather quickly. Like you said, he had that big game a few weeks ago. Uh, in, In Buffalo game, the wind and cold and everything made it just not a good game for passing. So, of course, he didn't have a great game there. But he can have a big week. They're going into Cincinnati. That's kind of like Pittsburgh's second home. And I expect the Steelers to stomp the Bengals into the ground. Actually, it's not even going to be close. Easy. I guess I can see Pierre Garçon sneaking up and uh, putting a couple points on the board this week. Well, he's a Frenchman, so you know he's sneaky. (laughs) Well, listen, like I said, over his past three home games, he's been targeted nearly ten times per game. So there's he's seen... Uh, a high number of targets, so there's a very good chance he gets into double digits this week, especially against Carolina. Deep sleepers. 
We are averaging 10.92 points per non-quarterback so far this season. We have two receivers and a running back. We'll start off with the receivers. San Diego wide receiver Dontrell Inman going up against Oakland. They let up the 10th most fantasy points to wide receivers this season. He actually has double-digit fantasy points in five of his last six games. Yeah. yeah, he did that pretty quietly. And he has at least five targets and 40 yards receiving in seven straight games and scored a TD each of the past three games. So he's really stepped it up in that San Diego offense out there. Alongside you think his middle name starts with a U? D-U-I, huh? D-U-I, baby. Uh, no, that's Michael Floyd's initials. Hey, he's, he's the Patriots signed him, man. I know. Are you serious? Yeah, I like ball. Michael Floyd too, man. He could blow up if he just learns that playbook quick enough he's out there. Believe. It's ridiculous. But yes, okay, Don Charles Inman, Marquise Lee from the Jacksonville Jaguars going into Houston. Now, they, they actually let up the fifth fewest fantasy points to wide receivers this season. But you look, even last week going up against a good defense in Minnesota, Marquise Lee, eight targets, five catches, 113 yards. He has double-digit fantasy points in six of his last nine games, and he's become the top target for Blake Bortles out there. Him and Allen Robinson just not on the same page this year, and it looks like Allen Robinson took a huge step back this season, along with Bortles, I must say, but... Marquise Lee, at least six targets in 11 of the last 12 games. So he's the go-to guy out there. It's kind of sad. I I actually came into the season with Marquise Lee as one of my very deep sleepers, and it's turned out that that was correct. But he's still not a guy that you want to say is the number one guy on an offense. So it kind of sucks. But I think he can have a solid week this week in the running back. Justin Forsett going up against New England. He's playing for Denver now. They let up the 16th most fantasy points to running backs. That's New England. Now, he already split carries with Devontae Booker last week and actually out-touched him. He's expected to be, I guess, the starter this week. He's expected to take over the starter role, but Devontae Booker is still going to play a large role in this offense uh, along with Forsett. But Booker didn't even see a carry after halftime last week. So Justin Forsett should get more and more playing time going forward. And he had three catches last week as well, but he didn't do great in fantasy. But I think this week he can step up. And why I mentioned he had three catches last week is because going against New England, you may end up having to pass a little bit more. And actually, New England has let up the fewest points in the AFC this season. They passed Baltimore this past week. So they're actually the number one defense in terms of points this season. But I, I expect Denver to have to uh, pass a good bit in this game and Forsett can maybe catch four or five passes out of the backfield. I like Forsett going up against New England. He was in Gary Kubiak's offense when he was in Baltimore, so he really didn't have to learn much. He was able to just come in and take over right away. I actually just dropped Booker in my league to be able to pick up Tyrod Taylor because Booker hasn't really been doing it for me. He had like one or two big weeks, and then he's just kind of here or there. I think Forsett's really going to take over. I think you'll see Booker fall back to the number two spot. Uh, Gary Kubiak really likes Forsett, and he trusts Forsett, and he knows what he has in him. So I think you're going to see a lot of him in Denver. Big easy. Don Treasy. Going with DUI. Oh man, Inman. I, I'll, I'll even, I'll say he puts up twenty three points this week. Balling. Don Trell. Yeah, we actually mid low twenties this week. We're actually PPR. taking the San Diego Oakland game in our line segment, and I think most of us took Oakland, but Oakland should be able to put up points on a bad San Diego defense, and that will force San Diego to pass a good bit in this game. And it's not like Oakland has a great defense either. Would you play Blau Pau over Cole Beasley? Blau Pau over Cole Beasley. It's close, but I would say yes. I'd go with Blau Pau. Mm, should I drop Beasley to sign Pau? Uh, at this point in the season, if you're confident in Blau Pau over Beasley, now this is just my opinion on Pau over Beasley. If you like Beasley more, keep him. But if you like Pau more this week, you might as well drop, drop Beasley because the season's about over, man. Play whatever you can the best you can. Should I drop Sterling Shepard instead of Beasley? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. Sterling Shepard, he's had a pretty solid season, but he's still a rookie, and he's not a guy you're going to be able to trust in your final matchup of the season, right? You're not going to be playing him in your championship if you get there. Doubt it. Clean your house. Clean him out. Need it. Need, a, need that win. I need that money. 
so I don't have to get a job. That's it, though, man. That's Somebody it. That's just broke got. into the studio, so wrap it up. We've got to get out the big guns. <laughs> Should I drop the Sean Jackson for Blau Pow or Dion Lewis? Uh, you could probably drop Dion Lewis at this point, man. He hasn't done what we hoped he would when he came back. They're still Word. they're still playing him limited playing time. That's it, fans, questions, comments, or you just want to generally make fun of us, hit us up on Twitter at bet underscore the spread. Hit me up on Twitter at bet Jim the Wind. Check out the Facebook page at facebook.com slash bet the spread. Keep coming back to YouTube. Keep clicking subscribe. Have a Merry Christmas if I don't hear from you by then, fans. <laughs>